I've been using the iPhone SE <laughs> for a few weeks now and this phone is the most amazing and worst phone I've used in a long time. I'm gonna try to make this video short and sweet because I'm in the car recording because I only get to record in the car because I just don't have space in my house to record. There's always somebody going in and out of my room. I can't film downstairs because there's always someone downstairs. So car video it is. For all my vlog watchers out there, you guys know that I've recently sold my iPhone 13 Pro. The reason I sold it was because the new iPhone 14 is coming out soon. I buy my phones unlocked, so I usually pay $1,000 for my iPhones and then I sell them for about 8 to 9 I bought the iPhone 11 Pro for 1000 sold it for like almost 900 bucks. bought the iPhone 12 Pro for 1000 sold it for like 850 And then the iPhone 13 Pro, I didn't have a case on it, didn't have a screen protector, it was pretty banged up, it was pretty scratched, so I sold it for 800 in preparation of the iPhone 14. Until then, I popped my SIM card into this monstrosity of a phone. This phone has been, like I said, the most amazing and the most worst phone experience ever. Let me explain why. The iPhone SE first gen came out a long time ago. This was Apple's way of saying, hey, we know people don't wanna to upgrade to the bigger phones like the iPhone 6 or the 6 Plus. Let's give our customers a smaller option for the time being. We'll remake the iPhone 5 with a newer camera, a newer chip. The thing about this iPhone, which is one reason once I switched to Apple, I haven't went back to Android really. This is a really old phone and it still has the newest iOS update. I'm not sure if it's getting iOS 16. I'll put that over here, a yes or no for you guys. But just being on iOS 15.6, that's pretty great. That's why this phone has been a joy to use. Going from the iPhone 13 Pro to this is not as big of a change as you would think. I mostly use my phone these days just to make phone calls for FaceTime, for iMessage, light social media like Instagram and TikTok. I watch YouTube on it, like for example, I'm in front of the supermarket while my wife is inside buying groceries. I might watch YouTube on it, but my main source of YouTube is my TV or my laptop. But for all those things, it's been great. Where this phone suffers is in battery life, the home button, lag when you have a little bit too many apps open, and when I say a little bit too many, I mean like five or six. <laughs> I guess it's a sluggish phone. Now this phone could be completely fine for a normal person, but coming from the iPhone 13 Pro with a 120 frames per second screen, the newest chip from Apple to allow me to blaze through whatever I'm doing, it's kind of a big downgrade in that regard, but I mean, I make phone calls, I use Apple Pay, I'm doing everything that I would use my phone for. The major difference where I wouldn't recommend anyone using a phone like this is when it comes to the cameras. But even then, it's not that bad. I'm recording right now on a Sony a7 IV. This is a $2,500 camera. I purchased this camera to not use iPhones anymore for vlogging. I wanted to upgrade to something more professional. I saved up money for a long time and I got this camera. So really and truthfully, I don't need the newest, the latest and greatest iPhone. The only reason I was upgrading to the newest iPhone so often was for the cameras, for my vlogging channel. And if you guys go back and watch my vlog, you guys see the quality changes from upgrade to upgrade to upgrade, especially going from the Galaxy S10e to the 11 Pro. I haven't used this to vlog because I don't need to, but I did make one or two vlogs with it. I'll link them in the description. I'll put the thumbnails on the screen so you guys can see which ones they are. It's doable. This rear camera, believe it or not, could still shoot 4K30. Doesn't have like a stabilization or anything like that. It's pretty choppy. But if you're just holding it still, having the rear camera face you, it's not bad. Where my phone suffers the most with this is the battery life and the home button. I have the virtual home button on the screen. This home button will work maybe one out of 20 times pressing it. The fingerprint scanner works fine. I would say the fingerprint scanner has a 80 to 90% success rate, okay? The button itself though, to go home, to do the app switcher, to activate Siri, it, it just doesn't work. It's been really frustrating to have the on-screen home button because the phone screen is so small, it gets in the way a lot, okay? 
there's only so much real estate I have, and that home button takes up a lot of room. The battery on this phone, I can't say that it's Apple's fault or anything like that. It's a really old phone. The battery did its job, and it's still doing a decent job. The problem with this battery is it goes from like 100 to zero in about 45 minutes of use. So if you take this off the charger at 100%, you got 45 minutes of screen on time with this phone before it's dead. I don't really use the phone that often. I'm mostly on my laptop, I'm mostly on my TV, watching YouTube or Netflix or whatever. Don't get me wrong, when I had the iPhone 13 Pro, I definitely would use that more because the OLED screen is just so beautiful. Watching videos, movies on that screen is just, it's an awesome experience. I don't really use this as much as I typically would. Apple Pay works fine. I got my SIM card in here. I don't have any issues. I still have iMessage, I still have visual voicemail. Everything works like the way you would expect an iPhone to work. One thing that uh, I know is gonna be hard for me to get used to again, I went through this last year. The iPhone mini, the iPhone 12 mini that I bought for Lena for Christmas a few years ago. That phone looks like a monster compared to this one. And I got so used to typing on this phone and using this phone that that phone feels big. So you can only imagine what going back to the 14 Pro or 13 Pro size is going to feel like. But yeah, the iPhone SE. It's been a weird experience because I jumped ship after the iPhone 4 came out. Once I seen the 4S came out and it was like not really changing anything and not really giving us anything great, I went to Android. And I stood on Android. And if it wasn't for my YouTube channel, I probably would have still been on Android. But I knew that iPhone had the better cameras, so I went to the 11 Pro. I've been stuck ever since because of AirDrop. Really and truthfully, that's the only reason. Oh, another reason. The Apple CarPlay is way better than Android Auto. And I don't know why Android Auto wants to be so sloppy looking. Hopefully they update that soon. That'll give me one more reason to go back to Android. But yeah, that's it. I just wanted to give you guys my little experience using this hilariously funny old small phone. I can't wait to get back to a normal sized phone and be able to make content with the phone again. I really want to try making TikToks, Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts to try to get my YouTube channel to grow. Definitely don't want to do that with this. <laughs> Horrible phone to make TikToks and Instagram videos with. Would not recommend. Did I mention the headphone jack? Because it has one. That's been nice. <laughs>